During an important trial, Josie told the court her entire story. The year was 1989, and Josie was still married, but her husband was abusive and liked to beat her up. One day Josie had enough and ran away with her kids Sammy and Karen. They went all the way to northern Minnesota to stay with Josie's parents, Hank and Alice, but the first thing Hank asked her was if her husband had caught her with another man. He'd been ashamed of her since young Alice got pregnant in high school, and she didn't know if her boyfriend Bobby who was always getting frisky in public was the father. Josie stayed with her parents, but it was difficult to have returned to her childhood home where everyone knew her kids didn't belong to the same father and now judged her for having left her husband. Even her own parents had to deal with the gossip. One day, while working in the hair salon, Josie reconnected with her old friend Glory, the first woman to work in the local mine where Hank works too. She offered Josie a position there, which would allow her to make enough money not to need her parents' help anymore. When she shared her decision with her folks, Hank didn't take it well, accusing her of wanting to be a lesbian and not being apt to do a man's job. Before she was accepted into the company though, she had to go through a very invasive test with a gynecologist to prove she wasn't pregnant because her word wasn't enough. One afternoon, her ex-husband showed up at the house to see Karen while Sammy ignored him because he wasn't his father. Josie kicked him out while Hank had hoped they would talk, and afterward, Alice told her that accepting the job at the mine would bring shame to the family. Tired of the lack of support, Josie accepted the job anyway and moved in with Glory and her husband Kyle until she could get her own place. On Josie's first day at the mine, Supervisor Pavich gave the new girls a speech about this being a man's job and the new law being the only reason they were hiring women, he also made inappropriate comments about their bodies and wouldn't stop other employees from throwing slurs their way. Glory had been working there for a while and even was a union rep, but even she had to fight for basic things like a break. Pavich gave the girls a tour of the place and Josie was shocked to discover that the guy in charge of the powder room was her school ex Bobby, who also made inappropriate comments when he saw them. It seemed he was still pushy, since Josie could remember how he was always trying to get busy with her outside school. One day, this got them caught by Mr. Ladovansky and earned them detention. The actual work in the mine wasn't so hard, but dealing with the men's attitude wasn't easy, they would often write slurs on the female changing rooms and hide inappropriate toys in their lunchboxes. At least Josie got to befriend Peg, Sherry, and Betty, and lunchtime was easier thanks to their company. Glory was there for them too, but Josie started to get worried about her health because what Glory called simple arthritis seemed to be getting worse. After lots of arguing and being made fun of with the rest of the union, Glory managed to get portable toilets installed outside. At home, Kyle tried to connect with Sammy by showing him his work with watches, but Sammy thought it was lame. A few weeks later, once Josie had earned her first paycheck, she was proud to take the kids to a nice restaurant to celebrate the start of a new better life. There, she was approached by Pearson, one of the company owners, who told her to go to him if she ever was in any trouble. One morning, while the girls were cleaning the powder room, which had more insulting graffiti waiting for them, one of the men asked Sherry for a cigarette, but instead of letting her take it out, he put his hand on her front pocket as an excuse to touch. Later, Josie went to Pavich to make a complaint, but he only told her to take it like a man. Josie threatened with talking to Pearson, but Pavich forbid her from doing so. Later, Bobby tried to hit on her and made her extremely uncomfortable, so she took a break in the changing room to have a good cry. When Glory found her, Josie still thanked her for getting her this job because for the first time ever she felt like she was actually living. One night at the local bar, Kyle got to reunite with his old friend Bill, who had come back to his hometown after getting divorced. Glory wanted to introduce Bill to Josie, but he was hesitant to jump back into the water so soon. By the time he made up his mind, it was too late, Josie was already dancing with Ricky, who she thought seemed a nice guy. When they returned home, Josie discovered Sammy had gotten drunk. The next day, Josie took the kids to see the house she finally got, although she had to deal with Sammy's rude hangover mood as well. After moving, things only got better for the family, Josie could finally buy good ice skates for Sammy to play hockey, and even a trampoline for the backyard. Sometime later, Bobby told Josie that he knew she was having a hard time so he had a talk with the guys to try to cool things down. Then, he sent Josie up the conveyor to take care of some clogging. However, as soon as she made it to the top, Bobby asked a friend to turn on the conveyor again and with the noise covering anything he may say from curious ears, he cornered Josie and tried to get busy with her after pointing out how nobody would find her for days if she fell. Upset, Josie turned him down and left. In the trial, Pavich called this typical behavior because Josie liked to make mountains from molehills. Josie had told him about what happened on the conveyor, and all Pavich did was give Bobby a talk. This made Josie remember the day she and Bobby had detention with Ladovansky, Bobby had been allowed to leave but the teacher made Josie stay longer to have a word with her. Back to Josie's story, one afternoon she invited her parents to come to Hank's hockey match on Sunday, but Hank made up some excuse not to go. Josie tried to make him see reason, pointing out how she worked hard and got her own place the same way he did, but he got offended by the comparison. When Sunday came, Glory and Kyle brought Bill so he could finally meet Josie. Her parents came as well, but they sat away from them. 
Sammy wasn't having a good time though, his teammates won't make passes to him because their parents don't want them to be friends with him. In the middle of the match, Bobby's wife came to yell at Josie in front of everyone, calling her a tart and telling her to stay away from her husband. After the match, Sammy's girlfriend told Josie that Sammy would be staying the night at her house. Josie didn't even know Sammy had a girlfriend and never gave him permission to stay anywhere else, thus she rushed to the girlfriend's car to drag Sammy out. An argument began between mother and son where Sammy told her everyone turned out to be right and she was truly a tart, and Josie got humiliated in public once again, now everyone thought she was crazy. When they got home, the kids went inside and Josie stayed in the car, crying. Back to the trial, Peg was telling everyone how after that day, Josie lost it and kept ranting to her female co-workers that they shouldn't take it anymore and nobody was protecting them. She also said that the men never bothered her, which was untrue, they also painted insulting graffiti on the machine she worked at and teased her for it. Whenever the women got together after work, Josie tried to convince them to go see Pearson together, but they were too afraid to lose their jobs or to get even more harassed for being tattletales. What made it the most difficult was the lack of Glory's presence, she wasn't going to work or to their girls' night because she was getting sicker by the day. Sometime later, when Josie was using the portable toilet, the men began to shake it until it dropped on the floor and Josie came out of it covered in toilet water, barely able to stand up until Ricky helped her. The next day Josie drove to the city to have a talk with Pearson, only to find out Pavich had gotten there first. Having Pavich's version of the events, Pearson refused to hear Josie out and told her he would make her the favor of allowing her to resign now instead of handing in the usual two weeks notice. Josie refused to quit though, which prompted Pearson to tell her to stop stirring her female co-workers and visiting the men's beds to instead work harder. At home, Sammy wasn't talking to Josie, didn't want to hang out with her either, and came home at whatever time he wanted. He also quit the Hockett team without letting his mom know. Some days later, Josie visited Glory and found out she had Lou Gehrig's disease, so she could barely move. Kyle stayed supportive of his wife through these hard times, and Josie couldn't help feeling a bit of envy. One morning, the women arrived at work to discover the men had written insults and slurs on the walls of their changing room using excrement. Because this was a reaction to Josie going to Pearson, the other women make her clean it all. Afterward, Josie went to see Ricky to get information on who did this, but Ricky told her these were her consequences to deal with. Then, Bobby took her to the powder room with the excuse of having a chat, but he actually threw her on the ground to assault her and almost choke her, threatening her with violence if she didn't play by the rules. During lunchtime, Josie told Ricky what Bobby did in front of everyone, but Ricky denied it and nobody offered support. That was the last straw and Josie finally quit. In the evening, Glory tried to attend the union meeting even while feeling sick, but since she wasn't working there anymore, they didn't let her stay. The next day, Josie asked Bill for help to sue the company, but Bill refused. He thought Josie had no chance, they would either call her a paranoid nuts that imagined things or a tart that asked for it. Josie accused him of not caring about the safety of women in the mine, leaving him feeling guilty. Later, Bill shared his worries with Kyle, confessing he would have taken the case if he was still working in a big New York firm. Kyle explained they never picked on Glory because she became a union rep early on and there was safety in numbers. This was enough for Bill to change his mind and go see Josie to accept the case, but only if she could get the other female employees' support so this could be a class action lawsuit. One woman could be accused of lying, but not all of them together. Josie was curious about his change of heart, and Bill explained harassment class action had never been done before and he wanted to be the first one. Josie went to see Glory to ask for her support, but she was in the hospital with her mind on different matters. During the first hearing, Josie showed up with Bill while Pearson took his lawyer Leslie, who immediately jumped on the fact Josie only had her own testimony while the company had signed declarations from the other women saying they were doing fine. The judge decided to give Bill and Josie a chance, but they had to find a minimum of three supporters for this to properly become a class action. Later, both Leslie and Bill visited the hospital to see Glory, who could barely even speak. She still refused to get involved, so Kyle kicked them out for bothering his wife while she was in such a state. Josie visited all the other female workers, but they were too scared to help. Leslie later had a meeting with Pearson to express her worries over possibly losing, especially since this could have a big impact on work law all over the country, but Pearson brought Bobby in to share some stories that could help them win. Meanwhile, Alice visited Josie to leave her some money to feed the kids while she looked for another job. When she returned home, Hank called her out for giving away his money, saying Josie had brought nothing but shame to the family. Tired of her husband's attitude, Alice decided to stay in a hotel for now, only leaving a note behind. Sometime later, Josie and Bill attended a union meeting, where Bobby was at the microphone saying he didn't do anything and insulting her. Josie asked for a turn to talk, which was her right as a union member, but they barely let her say a couple of words before inventing some rule about limited time. Everyone kept insulting her and making rude gestures, and Hank finally saw what Josie's reality was like. Not being able to see his own family mistreated like this, Hank took over the microphone to tell everyone he was ashamed of them for their behavior. 
Nobody picked on each other's wives during company picnics, yet now they didn't care that a friend's daughter needed help. Hank declared nobody in the room was his friend anymore and the only person he wasn't ashamed of was his daughter, yet when they left, all the men clapped for him for standing up for his beliefs. Afterward, Hank went to the hotel to reconcile with Alice while the other women went back to work. Betty and Sherry were starting to reconsider Josie's side, but Peg still wanted to lie on the stand. Things only got worse when Sherry opened her locked and found a man's seat on her clothes. During the trial, Leslie kept pressuring Josie about her history of lovers, claiming she had had a ton. She also brought Ladovansky to the courthouse while she let everyone know Josie was already a tart as a teenager and she even made passes at her teacher. Devastated, Josie had no other choice but to confess something she never told anyone. That day at detention, after Bobby left, Ladovansky took advantage of her. Bobby saw it and ran instead of helping her, but he told the company this to use it against Josie during the trial. Furious, Hank jumped on Ladovansky to beat him up, so he had to be removed from the room. Josie left as well, almost on the edge of a breakdown. That night, Josie's parents stayed with her for support. Sammy had run away from home and Kyle later found him in his basement, so he took the chance to scold him for how he treated his mother. Kyle understood that Sammy was upset for discovering his father had been an abuser instead of a soldier that died in war like Josie had told him, but that didn't give Sammy the right to call her names when she was always working very hard to protect and provide for her children. As a teenager, it would have been easier for her to give Sammy up to someone else, yet she kept him, and Sammy should appreciate that. After Kyle gifted him one of his watches to show him he had a friend, Sammy went to talk to Josie. She shared her experience of being pregnant, then the two of them agreed not to hide anything more from each other and hugged. The next day, Bill called Bobby on the stand, who kept lying and saying Josie had enjoyed being with Ladovansky. But Bill called him a coward that didn't have the guts to be a real man, taunting Bobby into finally admitting that Ladovansky had indeed attacked Josie and he did nothing. At that moment, Gloria arrived in a wheelchair and Kyle spoke for her, explaining she came to stand with Josie. Desperate, Leslie tried to stop this, pointing out Josie still needed two more people for this to be a class action, but it was too late, Glory's presence there inspired the other women and even a few of the men to stand up to support Josie as well. The real women of the Masabi Iron Range won their case in court. They received a modest financial settlement, but more importantly, they got a harassment policy that would protect them and all the women that came after them. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.